Hi, it's Ashley with At Home with Ashley and today I'm starting a new project that I'm so excited about. I've been thinking about this for over six months and what it is is I am going to buy a used filing cabinet and turn it on its side, take out the drawers and use it for a planter. And I've seen people do this and they usually paint it and it looks really cute. But my idea is to tile it and hand make the tiles so it looks like a big flower mural which is very ambitious, um, but I think it'll be fun. I have this sad little spot in my backyard that has a sand pit in it that my son has outgrown. So we're gonna move that to our chicken area because they do really good, they like taking sand baths. It's good for their feathers. So we're gonna move that back there and then I have this empty space that I can put a planter. I can have like a little kitchen herb garden because it's right out my back door. So I think this is gonna be super cool. Let's go shopping. I gotta go to Habitat for Humanity and maybe the thrift store, one of those two. I've got to have a good old filing cabinet. And so I'm gonna buy that and we'll bring it home. Okay, I was really lucky at the thrift shop. I was able to get exactly what I wanted for $10. $10 for this big, huge planter, such a good deal. There's three of them and I ended up choosing the one with the least dents and the one with like the least paint coming off just cause I feel like might as well get it as nice as possible. So we brought that home and my husband removed the drawers so all you have to do is you need like pliers and there's like a metal piece folded down to keep them in place so you just lift that up they come out and the good news with this project is um you can recycle metal super easily so we can recycle the drawers or reuse them um, but it's definitely a great upcycle project because you can take something that nobody wanted and make it usable again we ran to the hardware store to get supplies for this project the main thing i needed was tile and i'm getting the cheap adal tile from Home Depot and for a box which is all I'll need for this project it's $16 amazing and then the trim pieces are 78 to 90 cents per piece which is not so bad because I want something on the top that will have a smooth finish because if you use just the square tiles on the top you'll have a rough finish so I'm using some bull nose for that and some corner pieces for the side so hopefully that'll all work out and it'll be really affordable I also grabbed some plants some herbs because this is going to be an herb garden and for the adhesive, I did a ton of research on what I can use. And the best thing I found was that instead of using normal tile adhesive is to use um, construction adhesive. And this Gorilla Glue works outside and it works on metal and tile. So I'm using it and I'm hoping for the best. I'm in my craft room and I've just put out all the tile. For This is what will cover the front of the big part of the filing cabinet. And I have it out like this because I'm going to kind of paint it in like have it be a bigger picture instead of each tile be something on its own. And I painted tile, um, I did this for my fireplace and that worked out really good. And then I also did another method called sublimination um, where you can print something on the computer and then um, attach it to the tile. So I will put up the video for that here because if you're not artistic, that's a really good option for how you can design your own tiles. Um, but not have to paint them. But we're gonna paint these today because I think that's gonna be really cool. And the fun thing about this is I can paint these here and then we'll attach them outside on the tiles so you can kind of work on an easier surface than if you're painting directly onto the filing cabinet. I have been working really hard on painting the tiles for the front of the cabinet. This is a slow project. I thought I could do the tiles in two days. I'm like halfway done at two days. <laughs> halfway done with the front, so I'm like a third of the way done in two days. So. I don't want to think too much about that because that's going to take a while. So the way I I did the last tiles was I used this porcelain um, 150 paint pen and it's really inconsistent. So it doesn't draw like a nice sharp line and I didn't like that. Besides that, it worked. Um, so when I do my art, I really like to use these Micron 10 pens. And so I've been using them on this and it's not super advisable because sometimes when you paint, it kind of bleeds into it but if you want a really nice line, it gives that to you. And if you're not into like drawing a line and then painting into it, um, you can just paint and that'll save all your problems. But my style is kind of to have a black line and then have the art within it. So I have been using this. Um, we'll see how it turns out. And honestly, it's a very enjoyable process. Painting everything is really nice. Um, so it's not like I'm hating my life the whole time. So that's at least good news. I have my tiles all completed and I think they're looking really nice. I'm very happy with them. So what I'm going to do is turn them around and number the backs. So when I bake them, I can put them all back in the right place because this is like a big puzzle. So I want to make sure to do that. Okay, I finished painting all of the tile. I did 
the big front and then the side was a lot faster. So that took about a week. And then I let it dry for 24 hours. I put it in the oven. It needs to bake at 300 degrees for 35 minutes. And then that sets the paint, which is really important because you're going outside. Also, when you grout, you want the paint to be set. Um, if you do it the right way, you can grout really easily. I, like I said, I had that bowl I used and we put in the dishwasher. We use it like multiple times a week and it stayed on for years, probably eight years now. Anyway, this method does work, I promise. So once the tiles were all baked, it's time to actually start working on the planter. So I filled the bottom of the planter with some cardboard. I did some branches. I did like... I had some plants I bought from the nursery that kind of died, so I put those in. Anyway, and then I put in three bags of garden soil. It's a big area, so if you can take up some space, that's good. And um, the branches and the cardboard at the bottom will eventually break down and become dirt anyway. So that's what I did to fill that. And then before I started tiling, it was really important to use a sander and to just rough up the front and the side of the planter. That gives some grip for the tile, so that's good. So sand it, clean that off, and now it's actually time to tile, which is so exciting. So we began at the top corner, and then we worked our way over and down, and I designed it so that you only had to cut tile on the bottom and the sides, um, just because I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And what I was originally planning on doing was to cut off like right at the brown mark, the dirt underneath. But my husband was like, if one of these breaks, you're gonna have to paint it, let it dry, let it cure and so he's like let's just have the brown be the second one up and then a white one underneath it so if it breaks we can just get another one out of the box which i thought was fairly wise um we did have a lot of white tile to fill in with the pattern and i can't i originally was planning on painting every single one and i can't imagine how long that would have taken but i really like how the pattern looks and it's so satisfying to see it as you like make the whole um, as you tile the whole thing. So I just used construction adhesive and I did a lot of research on what would work. So the problem is, is it needs to be rated for outdoor use with metal and tile. And the Gorilla Glue construction adhesive was the only thing I could find for that. And it was so good to use. Um, I just squirted it on the back with cult then and then it held um, while, it, while it was put on the side of the filing cabinet, which not all construction adhesive would do. So I'm really happy with my choice of that. It worked great. I used three bottles of it. They're $10 each, so that's 30 bucks in um, glue, but totally worth it. So you glue all of those on, you cut the tile, and you let that dry, then you glue those on too. And it takes a few hours, but it's a pretty quick tile job, and it looks so good. I'm really pumped with how it looks. Next up is grout. For this project, I decided to use white grout because I think it'll just make everything look really seamless. So I mix that up and then I use a grout bag and I just pipe it onto the seams between where the tile hits. And then my husband went back in with a float and shoved it in. <laughs> and the grout I used was so messy. I thought I mixed it correctly with the right amount of water, but it was kind of coming out the end and coming out the, like the opening. So it was kind of a mess, but it was cool to see it all come together. And then I kind of made a mistake. I should have painted the top before um, I, tiled it but it's okay so I just went through it and painted it because I just want it to kind of all disappear and be white and a tiny bit on the sides I had to paint white too because those were showing and I didn't want it like it just wasn't enough to do a piece like of tile on the side um so I painted all of that and then it was planting time I'm doing some roses in here and like a little herb garden I think that's gonna look very cute I'm so happy with how the planter turned out. I think it's really cool. I thought of this idea so long ago, so having it come to life is very satisfying for me. And it kind of feels like a piece of art in my yard and it really pulls my house into my yard and it has my style in a space that normally wouldn't be. I'm always looking for ways to bring some whimsy into my yard. And this is a very fun way. And I feel like it could be customized in so many different ways. If you like this project, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please subscribe. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see videos on gardening or upcycling, or I guess this was kind of an art project because I painted all that stuff. Um, let me know because I will make more videos for you. And one other note I want to say is I did use that pen that wasn't rated for porcelain use and as we grouted, just the black part of that pen kind of disappeared. So I wasn't super pumped about it. I should have used the porcelain paint pen. So just so you know, that's kind of a mix up. 
And another thing I should have done was I should have drilled holes into the bottom of it for drainage. I'm not super worried about it because we're in very dry Utah and I have twigs at the bottom. Um, but it is best practice to have drainage holes in the bottom of a planter just so it doesn't get flooded with water and then get all like gross. So there are some tips and let me know if you have any questions.